In this part, we are modeling a low-poly column using a reference image and a high-poly one for sculpting. The very first thing to do is to add a reference image. Press numpads 1 or 3 to enter one of the side views. Go to Add Image Reference. You can browse through folders with just one click. Locate your reference image and click on it twice. With your image selected, Press G, then Y to move it along Y axis. I have created a blueprint which looks similar to one of the columns. Preparing such pictures in advance can help you a lot. Select your cube. Hit G, then Z to move it down to the bottom. Hit Tab to enter the edit mode. Hit Alt Z to turn on the wireframe view. Now you can select all the vertices behind. Select the upper vertices and move them down along Z-axis. We have to scale the object but limit Z-axis. As one of the ways, you can go to Item tab and lock scaling for Z-axis. I am choosing the most convenient view in terms of the tutorial. You could go with the orthographic view as well by pressing Numpad 5. It is also a good idea to turn off auto perspective if you prefer working in this view all or most of the time. Now you can switch between side views and stay in the orthographic view when you start rotating the camera. I'm going to inset, extrude and scale the geometry. Press I to inset, E to extrude as to scale inwards or outwards. Generally, we are building steps like in a pyramid. You could try modeling the top and side views to be more precise, but in terms of demonstrating the general process, I am keeping this view. At this stage, you have to build a general shape of the object to preserve the basis. If you go into detail too early, you might end up fixing it and wasting time. Keep it precise to its overall shape, but not too much. Let's copy the basis to make a high poly version. Your cursor must stay in the viewport to execute copy and paste. Rename the objects accordingly. Delete the pattern if you don't need it. Press Ctrl R to make a loop. You can add loops with scrolling your mouse wheel or just type in the number. Select the top vertices and switch to Edge Select with key 2. Select the edges which you want to be rounded. Open the context menu with a right click. Go to Loop Tools and choose Circle. If you don't have this option, you have to turn it on in Preferences, Add-ons, Loop Tools. This way we can preserve quad topology, while having square and circle shapes combined together in the same object. Well, you could separate the platform and the pillar, but it wouldn't serve you well if it came to sculpting, texturing or using it as a game asset. Now hide the low poly and unhide the high poly. Go to a side view. Turn on wireframe and select the platform's vertices. Hide them by pressing H. This time, when we add loop cuts, we won't affect the platform as we want as less polygons as possible, even for the high poly. Add around 50 loop cuts. You could go with 30, but I prefer to have a smoother surface. Select the top vertices, hit X and choose to delete the faces. We actually can't make the top rounded with so many faces inside using loop tools as we would get wrong topology. However, we can have it as Angon. Press F to create a face. Select the edges you want to be rounded like we've done before. Go to Loop Tools and select Circle. Add an additional loop cut at the top.
Select all the vertices except the top and bottom ones. This way we are creating borders for smooth modifier. Go to Vertex Groups and create a new group. Name it somehow Smooth and assign the selected vertices. All the vertices created further between the selected ones will be assigned to the group automatically. Now look at the reference image. It's called a pancake, a short platform, transition and another sort of split pancake. These are shapes we're going to follow. We're going to use Smooth Modifier, so we have to exclude the hard edges. We need to add some loop cuts to make it work more precisely, but not too many. We also have to exclude the vertices, which we don't want to affect. Select the group and hit Remove. Deselect these vertices and hit Assign again. Let's pinch the middle. Select the bottom and scale it inwards as we're building a pancake shape. Let's correct the vertex group. Go to Modify tab and choose Smooth. Select our vertex group. Tweak the repeat field about 5 times. Go to Object Context menu and choose Smooth Shading. It actually imitates smooth and geometry without affecting it. Go to Edit Modes and unhide the platform by hitting Alt H. Let's also correct the shape. Now we're ready to apply the modifier. It is also necessary to apply all transforms for our mesh. If not do that, we might have some issues with sculpting or creating texture maps. Alright, time for sculpting.